With just two races remaining in the regular season, why not take the NFRN Truck Series drivers to where they've never been before? This time to find the checkered flag, they'll have to turn both left and right in order to find the finish line and victory lane. That is what the setting is today here at Mayville Lakeside Park, the first and only road course of the NFRN Truck Series season in the Mayville 250. Hello again everybody, Colin Denton here with RVN. And in the second to last race of the regular season for the NFRN Truck Series, the drivers will have to take on a road course. For many of these drivers, this is a foreign track type. A few of them tried to run up in the Amateur Cup Series at Knox Raceway. Some uh, uh, succeeded in making that race. Some just got a few laps in during the qualifying session for that. But many of the drivers have no laps on a road course, and that's going to make this race very exciting to see who will be able to find their way to the front and get the checkered flag. Six full-timers have claimed victory so far this season. They have their berths for the playoffs locked in, but there's two more races left. Who will be able to get those spots? And is it going to come down to just winners? Who will be able to find their victory today and make sure they're moving on? Our last journey across the nation took us from New York to New Mexico. Well, now we're headed back to New York. This time, a little bit more toward the west part of the state rather than north. Mayville, New York, obviously the location, a population of just around 1,700 people, 127 miles away from Pittsburgh, a little further away from New York City than last time. One of the interesting facts about the city, Steamboat Chautauqua Bell was constructed here in Mayville for the Bicentennial back in 1976 and still operates today on the Chautauqua Lake. You can see it right there on the right side of the map. Now let's see how the part-time duels fared out. In duel number one, Richard Fritch and Justin Carr would lead the way on the rest of the field, 34 trucks in total. Those two would run side by side until they hit this corner, heading onto one of the city streets. Justin Carr got the better exit off the corner of Teen. Meanwhile, on the other end of this street, we would see one of the more treacherous corners for the circuit, overdriving, heading into the braking zone. Aiden Wilder gets into the grass a little bit. Cameron Vargo makes the pass. That would play a huge factor later on. We'd also see Richard Groffy and Louis Usher getting a little testy right there as Vargo tries to make another pass. In the end, Justin Carr would be able to maintain his lead and hit the checkered flag first, followed by Richard Fridge, Zach Griffin, Justin Zydell, Kyle Langland, Dylan Farrell, Richard Roffey, Brian McDonough, Louis Usher, and Cameron Vargo all making the next round. On to duel number two, led by Aiden Fife and Luke Evans. Fife gets off to a good jump, but Evans remaining competitive in the middle. We'd see another mistake coming off the street. Lucas Setz gets a little into the grass, and Will Stukes makes the jump on it. Meanwhile, Addison Steinbeck, running third at the time, would try to challenge Luke Evans in the final corners of the track and would make the pass, moving into second place. Aiden Fife, though, had just enough speed to maintain the lead the entire time. Steinbeck, Evans, along with Brett Graham, Adam Lewis, Daniel McMo, Kyle Springer, Dan Donnie Williams, Derek Hamill, and Will Stukes all moving on to the final round. We'd see those 20 trucks try to compete for the final six spots in the field. And obviously the two winners of the duels, Justin Carr and Aiden Fife, would lead the way. Justin Carr was able to get a little bit of an advantage in turn one, but then on the banked corner two, Aiden Fife would be able to find his way around the 50 and charge his way up to the lead. In the critical sixth place spot, we'd see a few cars get off into the grass. Richard Fridge and Justin Zydell definitely detrimental to the 88. But Fridge would only drop back to 6th place, and from there, it was pretty much single file as the field fanned out from there. Fife able to come around and take the checkered flag, followed by the dual one winner, Justin Carr. Also making the show are Addison Steinbeck, Zach Griffin, Luke Evans, and Richard Fridge. Justin Zydell, that mistake he made in that corner is going to cost him as he falls to 7th place. And Adam Lewis, who made the first three starts consecutively, still looking for that fourth start on the season. We saw a few unsponsored cars actually make the field, like Rafi, Farall, and Springer, but they are not going to be able to get in as they are all in the back half of this results page. And on our hot seat for today's race is Dalton Wise. A couple of top fives at Trenton and Zen Joltis. Not so great runs at Twin Ring and Oswego, but still the most points accumulated over the past four races. We'll see him navigating this circuit with his visor cam. That'll be it for this pre-race coverage. Let's take it down trackside for the starting command as we see the rest of the duel results passing through. Put your hands together for
for Craig Anderson from the Ottawa Senators. Drivers, start your engines. Fire in the hole, but I'm going to fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. You know the deal then. Beautiful sunny day in western New York for some racing. Let's take a look at the starting grid, and it looks like the drivers competing in the dual races got a little bit of extra experience that played out well for them in qualifying. Addison Steinbeck in the number 16 Billy Boat Chevrolet is on the pole in his first career start. Luke Evans in the number 86 Coastal Carolina Chevrolet is to his outside third career start. Best finish of 13th at Pikes Peak. In run number two, we have a pair of full-timers. Jesse McConaughey still on probation from his bump drafting incident. And Adam Kuhn, the New York native, who finished sixth at Zen Joltis. In run number three, we have Moses Osborne, the second practice leader, who has two top tens in a row starting from place five. Daniel Boyles earned his first top five at Oswego. He'll start sixth. In run number four, Josh McCoy on the inside. He has finished outside the top 35 twice in a row. And on the outside, Essentia, one finish better than 25th. He'll start in place eight. Rounding out the top 10, we've got Mike Simpson, one of the three drivers tied for second place in the points, and Steve Ray, who is third among the non-winners in the standings. In row number six, we've got a part-timer of Justin Carr making his first career start, and James Smith, the top non-winner in that standings chart. In row number seven, Jasper Rawls, two top 20s in a row, and Aiden Fife also making his debut in the NFRN Truck Series. In row number eight, we have Aaron Dumati, whose best finish of 17th is just two spots below his qualifying spot. Derek Anderlein finished 10th at Zen Joltis. In row number 9, we have a pair of drivers who got their worst finishes of the season at Zen Joltis. Hunter Cox who finished 32nd. Justin Lizenby flipped on his roof and got his second last place finish of the season at the track last race. And rounding out the top 20, Jim Fowler, who has three top 20s in a row, including his victory at Oswego. Keith Young hasn't finished any better than 20th. That came at twin ring. And as we cycle through the rest of the starting grid, you'll notice that we didn't say a lot of winners up there in the top 20. Well, that's because a lot of them had some problems in qualifying. Several of them trying to make their way around the first and only road course of the season and obviously not proving to be their best track type. Barry Watson and Tyler Reed back here in row 15 and also Clint McComb in row 16. Remember, these guys are not clinched in yet. All of them have wins, obviously, but... They have to make sure that they stay in the side of the top 25. No one's guaranteed that they're going to stay in the top 25. We haven't gotten a points confirmation on that. And Barry Watson, obviously, in the most dangerous spot. He's basically on the hot seat in terms of can he stay inside the top 25. Everyone else is doing decent, but mathematically, they could all still drop out of that cutoff line. Today, they're going to have a little bit more work to do and a little bit more difficult time doing it on the road course. Steinbeck and Evans cross the turn, and the green flag flies here at Mayville. And unlike some of our part-timer races, there was no drama in that one. Addison Steinbeck pulled out to the lead right away and maintained it as Luke Evans will slot in the second, Jesse McConaughey into third. You can see the pack way back there trying to sort themselves out. Not quite single foul yet. They're probably going to be working into this corner. And we know that this next turn off of the road is going to be one of the more treacherous ones in terms of who stays on the racetrack and who overdrives it. Some of those on the outside need to be concerned. Moses Osborne goes off just a little bit. And J Josh McCoy is going to try to take advantage. Osborne trying to fight his way into a playoff spot. Can he get a win? It's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb. But currently running in the sixth position. Six ten points. The second among the drivers that haven't gotten a win so far this season. He's in a pretty good spot right now. Steve Ray, who's one of his competitors, is just behind him, and so is J uh, James Smith. So out of those three drivers, he's doing the best right now, but he's got the 34 on his side looking to take the spot, and it looks like in this turn and through the S's, he will be able to clear him. McCoy's had an awful couple of races going for him as Osborne tries to fight back on the outside line. 34 trying to look for another good finish and see if he can put himself back in the competition. 
But in terms of going for an open playoff spot, if it does open up, it looks like those chances are diminishing. You can see Oswego, 40th place. Zen Joltis, 36th. Some of the worst finishes you can try to go for if you end up trying to compete for a spot. As you can see, Osborne managed to fight his way back into the spot that was overtaken by McCoy. The 85 is back up to 6th place. Could end up being a good day for the 34, but let's see if the number 21 has something to say about it as he starts to crawl up toward a couple of those drivers that we just mentioned. Steve Ray now up to 9th place. He's obviously trying to compete with Moses Osborne for a potential open spot. Those two are tied on the standings right now, but they're both five points behind James Smith. And Ray just gets a little bit off course. And obviously that's going to lose a little bit of speed. We see Jesse McConaughey up here. He's having a solid day, both in his qualifying effort and now trying to get into race trim. You'll remember that he had the probation given to him after an incident at bump drafting, which essentially spans the rest of this regular season, including all the Amateur Cup Series races he'll be able to qualify for. And at Zen Joltis, our last truck race, he ended up finishing 31st, first race of, the, of three on that probation. I believe he didn't really have a problem, per se. He just lost the draft, possibly got held up by laugh traffic. I'm not sure about that, though, but definitely did not hold with the pack and ended up having a pretty poor day as a result as he dropped a little bit further back in the point standings as he tries to compete with some of those contenders as well. But now he tries to hunt down a couple of part-timers that would spoil the field and make one of those open playoff spots possible. We mentioned Barry Watson had a pretty subpar qualifying run and he's actually gained a few spots. He's up to 21st now. Comes into this race 19th in points, just 9 points ahead of 25th place. We're on, not really able to crunch the hypotheticals at the moment, but obviously he just needs to gain some positions, and he's trying to make that happen, although I don't believe that corner is going to help him overtake Lexton, but he obviously started in row 15. I believe that would be place 29, so he's gained eight spots so far this race alone. And every spot's going to mean another point that will help him make a run into the playoffs. Try to make sure that he stays on the racetrack as well, heading through that treacherous corner at the end of the road. Two laps under our belts on lap three, about to complete it. Addison Steinbeck leads the way. Hey, man, you cut me off back there. What you gonna do about it? Oh, man. Fine. Are we good? We're good. Back at Mayville on lap number four, the 16 truck continues to hold control of this race as we've got a couple of part-timers leading the way. Steinbach and Evans trying to see if they can become the first part-timer to win a Truck Series race. So far, we've had six full-timers take it to victory lane. We've got Adam Kuhn up here in the top five, obviously, having a very solid day, but he's also a native of New York, and this is obviously the second track that we've been to in New York, second in the last three, actually, for the Truck Series, at least, and Kuhn having a solid day. Stephen Carmona, the other New York driver, struggling just as his season has been going, and none of the part-timers that are natives of the state were able to qualify for the race. Cameron Navargo was one of those disappointments as he had a pretty solid season so far, but unable to make it even though he got into the final part-time group. Looks like Dalton Wise, our hot seat driver, might have gotten a little bit into the grass. Still trying to compete back here, though, but he's having a pretty subpar day. He's trying to fight with a few of the back markers here. Looks like road course was not his specialty and he is paying dearly for it as he just tries to see what he can do to finish out the day. Hopefully make sure that he is able to clinch his way into the playoffs by the end of this race. 
we figure by, that by the time that the points all shake out, whatever these drivers are able to accumulate, some of them might be able to clinch their way in. However, it's uncertain which of those drivers it's going to be based on how they're running right now. Tyler Reed trying to work his way around, and he hasn't been gaining spots quite like Barry Watson has. As he tries to work his way around Keith Young. He's currently back here on 30th. One at Zen Joltis helped him to take the points lead. But just like all of the winners here this weekend, he is struggling at the road course and trying to see what he can do to improve his truck, maybe gain a few spots off pit lane. The expectation here is that they are going to have to take at least one pit stop. It's a pretty long circuit, which means that gas is probably going to be necessary and tires will probably be a luxury for some of these guys as they try to make sure that they stay on fresh rubber. But when that will happen is still yet to be seen. But it looks like they'll be able to make it on just one stop and not two. We see Justin Carr here in 12th place. We'll give a shout out to him because he is from neighboring Pennsylvania. So it is a pretty close course to where he is coming from. Also, we got Aiden Fight back there in 13th place. Not very close to this track, but he has some pretty fitting sponsorship from FDNY. Good to see him make his first career race as well as Carr. In fact, I believe that we've got several of them here this weekend, including Zach Griffin. All these guys making their first career start in this series. And in fact, taking a look at the notes, it looks like five of the six drivers from the part-timer division are making their first career starts. Luke Evans being the exception, making his third. Not surprising given how many drivers try to qualify each week. Some of them might not be able to get into a race this season. So definitely getting in this year is going to be a success for some drivers. Taylor the Pig is back here in 39th place. He seems like a guy that could contend, get up there in the points, but still zero top tens on the season. He's made amateur cup series starts even, but still running pretty far back here in the field. And in fact, his teammate, you can see way in the back, he is in last place recency in the 69 truck. This team in general just having an awful day on the road course. But as for Taylor, it just seems like he's having a pretty bad run going for him late in the regular season. And it looks like he's going to need a victory if he wants to go into the playoffs. You can see now Clint McComb trying to make a move on Benny Seitzer in the 83. It looks like he got off into the grass. Overdrove that corner a little bit. And you can see the groove is kind of gravitating toward that high line up near that corner, not able to make the move. Luke Evans comes down the pit lane. Addison Steinbeck stays out. And the majority of the field is going to pit right here. Jasper Rawls and Justin Carr are also going to stay out, but the entire rest of the field stay, comes down pit lane. The 16 truck who was leading the race stays out. This could really play into some strategy here midway through the race. Moses Osborne, I think, just made contact with Daniel Voiles. That would have been damage on the right front if that's true. And it looks like the entire field is going for four tires. I'm curious, though, how is that going to impact 85 at all? But Luke Evans is going to be able to win the race off of pit lane over Justin McConaughey, Adam Kuhn, and Daniel Voiles coming in pretty far behind, and Osborne has not pulled out of his stall yet. And a big lost position here for the 85 driver who is trying to find his way into a points position. From what we're hearing, it sounds like Luke Evans' crew chief, Ian Dillon, made the late call to make sure that the 16 was not going to go on the same strategy. That let the 16 stay out another lap, and it sounds like all of the teams behind the 86 went for it anyway with Evans. But for Carr and Rowles, I think they were trying to see if they could stay out of the traffic and wait out another lap. And we've got a penalty. Barry Watson, too fast entering pit lane. And this is huge news for the Columbia winner. He's going to have to come down for a stop and go as Addison Steinbeck now comes in to take his service. The driver that is on the cut line, or at least the closest to it, in terms of making the playoffs. 
he has made a big error on pit lane. You can see the 16 making his service. Luke Evans and Jesse McCona trying to charge up. We're going to see what kind of advantage one lap of fresher rubber is going to have on these two drivers. Steinbach's crew gets to the right sides. Jacks it down, pulls away, but the 16's not going to get out in time. Luke Evans goes to the lead. And pit strategy is going to play a big factor in this one as the leader's unable to hold his spot. And Barry Watson comes down to take his penalty. A big mistake for the Dirty 8 driver. Officials let him pull away, but Watson's going to fall to the back of the field. Drama late in the going. We'll be back from Mayville after this. I was made in the shadows of greatness. Shaped by the hands of legacy. Forged in the fires of racing. I've been challenged. Tested. And proven. Whether it's on that track or off. The truth is, what you're made of is what you're made to do. We are back at Mayville, and to recap what just happened before we went to break, the 86 of Luke Evans and his team withheld their pit strategy until the last possible second, then came down, making sure that the 16 stayed out for an extra lap, and by doing that, the 16 came down, the 86 had a lap fresher tires, and used that to his advantage to take the lead. The rest of the field came down behind Evans, but the 16 of Steinbeck falls to third, Adam Kuhn is right all over his back bumper. Also taking place on the last set of pit stops, Barry Watson comes into pit lane too fast. The officials catch him speeding, and he has to make a stop-and-go penalty, which has put him all the way back to 41st place. There were no other penalties on the field. Watson was still able to manage to get into another spot. There he is in the 38th. You can see he's behind Keith Young. But in front of Trevor Nix, who are these guys just had slow pit stops. So he's still around the field, but obviously more, about 20 spots lost on that mistake by Watson. And so many points just given up by a simple mistake of not slowing down fast enough. And obviously we don't have a live ticker going with our standings at the moment, but... I believe if the field stays where they are right now, Watson would be out at the moment. Which means that going into race 8 at Texas World, this, he would be in a must-get-in situation. Would have to have a great day to be able to maintain his top 25 spot. And that brings up the question of who's going to run well among the non-winners. Steve Ray maintaining his position, but Moses Osborne has fallen off the grid. We saw that he made contact with Daniel Voiles on pit lane as he was coming to his stall. But it looked like the service, maybe to get some damage repair, took a lot longer than he expected. And he's dropped outside the top 10 that he'd been running in for pretty much this entire race. And also, James Smith, he's dropped a few positions as well. He was 14th before he came in for his pit service. And now he's back to 20th. So depending on the days that th these three drivers have, that could impact if someone else comes up and tries to take a spot away. And you can see Osborne is back there in 28th place as the leaderboard cycles through. So about eight spots behind Smith is Osborne in the 85. And there he is now. And imagine how disappointing that's got to be as you were having a great day going for you and possibly had the, the spots to get the top spot that would possibly be open if Luke Evans is able to close the deal. Now trying to fight with Ross Kisman to make sure he doesn't lose another spot. But what a tough break for the Louisiana driver. And just a few laps remaining to try to gain any of those spots back. But passing, we, we've seen that it's been a bit of a difficulty on this racetrack, seemingly the best spot to make a pass. 
is right here at the end of the road and going through this portion of the circuit. We see Clem McComb. He has really not gained anything since he started this race. Started on row 16 and I think he even fell back a few positions. And you can tell that the 69, I remember he was last place when we took a look at his teammate, and now McCombs behind him. I don't believe McCombs is in last place, but he's definitely back there. Not back there in terms of being in last place, but definitely too far in the field for him to gain any significant points. Had led the point standings for a couple of races. Really thought that he might have had an opportunity to clinch his spot here, but I don't think it's going to happen based on the way that he's running. Well, we look back at the front of the field. Luke Evans, obviously not a lot of activity up here, but Evans is still the leader, and that's huge because obviously we mentioned no part-timers won so far this season in the Truck Series. We've had winners in the Elite Cup Series and the Amateur Cup Series that were driving in the series below them. Obviously, for the part-timers in this division, they're just running to try to get into this series alone. But none of them had had success in these first six races to get to victory lane. It's been full-timers, and understandably so. They're the guys that have the experience. But for Luke Evans, a great run, a great qualifying session, some experience possibly from running the dual races, was able to give him enough to get up here in, in the first place. And then a great strategy call that got him the lead. Jesse McCona, we know that he's had a rough going in these past couple races past couple weeks but for him a victory would be sweet and that would guarantee his spot into the playoffs now it's just a matter of what can he do to catch up because the 86 is getting smaller and smaller in his view the 86 rounding the corner of the white flag flying Luke Evans just has one more circuit before he becomes a winner of the NFR and truck series the 16 of Steinbach trying to see if he can gain on Makana to try to get that spot back. He's looking to the inside, but not able to get to his quarter panel. This is the third race for Evans. He qualified for his first two attempts at Pikes Peak and Twin Ring Motegi. 13th was his best run coming from Pikes Peak, but he's missed the past three races. Now he gets back onto the road course. The England native is just trying to see what he can do. The win is definitely going to provide some exposure. And the way that he's driving right now looks like he's on pace for that victory. He's getting ready to leave the road and head back onto the race circuit. 86 rounding these final few corners. There's just absolutely no competition behind him. The worst that he can do right now is just mess up in one of these corners, get off the road. So that doesn't seem to be too much of a problem, at least through these corners. The most of the mistake you could have made was off that road, and he cleaned that turn perfectly. And he is getting ready to head down the home stretch through the yeses for the 86 truck. And he is going to use pit strategy to get by the 16 truck and head to his first checkered flag in his career, Luke Evans, the winner here at Mayville. What a smart play that was. Amazing teamwork by this 86 team, and Luke Evans going to take home his first career victory here at the road course. So looking at the finishing results, Luke Evans comes home victorious. Justin McCona just short. Addison Steinbeck, who led the first half of this race, ends up in third place after the pit strategy. The New York native Adam Kuhn with a solid fourth place run. And Daniel Wells, who needed something great today, ends up in fifth. Steve Ray with a ninth place run. The best finish out of those three drivers that were looking to get to the top of the non-point standings. Well, now that Luke Evans won, there is a guaranteed spot open on points alone. And Steve Ray might be the one that moves up into that top spot. Also, a solid day by Aiden Fyth. In his first career race, he ends up with a top 10. We'll also see some solid days out here with the part-timer Justin Carr, Dylan Lexton getting some good points here, Jim Fowler, 
might be able to lock himself in with his 16th place run. Meanwhile, James Smith ends up in 21st place. Not a terrible day, but obviously with the points conversation opening up, he needed to get those points today, and he lost a few that might end up giving Steve Ray a good jump start into race number eight. Also having a terrible day is Moses Osborne ends up in 30th place. Looks like he did get passed up by Ross Kispin and possibly Richard Fridge late in the going. A couple of winners back here not having good days. Dalton Wise and Clint McComb end up in the 30s. Clearly not having a good run out on the road course. And Steven Carmona, another New York native, ends up in 34th after running in the 20s early on in the race. And possibly the biggest shock to the standings so far, Barry Watson with his pit road penalty ends up in 41st place. A lot of points going to be lost here. We move on to the raw standings and we have a new points leader and a few guys that are confirmed to be moving on to the playoffs. Mike Simpson, Tyler Reed, and Jim Fowler are clinched in to the postseason. You can see Dalton Wise, even though he's just three points behind Fowler, is not clinched, although it seems like he is still in a good position as far as moving forward. Also up near the top of the points chart, Steve Ray is now in second place, the first non-winner that would be getting an open playoff spot. Adam Kuhn moves into third above James Smith as Moses Osborne drops completely out of the top 10. Justin Makana also with his second place run today jumps all the way to sixth as he remains in this conversation. We can see here that Osborne dropped to 11th place and he's tied with Clint McComb who is also trying to make sure that he can get in, still not mathematically clinched in. And here's the big shock of the race, Barry Watson down here in 28th in points. He is behind the cutoff line. As of right now, he is not going to be in the playoffs, but one more race to pick up three points. If he's not able to do that at Texas World, he will not be a part of the playoffs. So this is going to be a big storyline to watch as we head into race number eight. And if you're wondering just how good of a race this was for Luke Evans, well, his victory puts him all the way to the top of the standings for part-timers, 15 points ahead of Jeff Capico. Now here is what the playoff picture looks like when you chart it all out. Mike Simpson, Tyler Reed, Jim Fowler, we know they're headed to the playoffs. Dalton Wise and Clint McComb look like they're in solid position, but not mathematically clinched in yet. Steve Ray holds the open playoff spot, but Adam Kuhn's going to be in green for as long as Barry Watson is not in the top 25. So at the moment, there's two possible open spots. Could be clinched down to one, could possibly become three, if we happen to have another part-time winner next race at Texas World or another driver somehow drops out. But obviously this is going to be something to watch as we move forward. And we'll see whether or not Watson's able to get back into the top 25 or if a second spot is going to be open. But we can guarantee at least one points position will be open for a driver that doesn't get a win. A quick look at the team standings. You can see Dunderhawk Motorsports pulls ahead of Ramco Motorsports' James Smith. Despite his little bit of struggling, still had a better day than Clint McComb. And obviously, they'll see if they can win that team championship. Looks like that might be the only one they'll be able to even compete in compared to the Elite and Amateur Cup Series. And heading into our upcoming race at Mirage 2 for the Amateur Cup Series, we'll see that some of these drivers are switching rides, more so in the back of the field. Jasper Rawls is actually going to take the 54 car for this race. He'll be kicking out Clint McComb, who had been running that ride for most of the season, and he'll be driving well, the number that he currently runs in the truck series, the number eight Toyota. What a run it was for the England native of Luke Evans as he comes over to New York and picks up a victory. He'll still have plenty to fight for for the rest of this regular season, but he opens up the playoff conversation for the drivers that are running full time. We've got just one more race to go in this regular season for the NFR and truck series and we'll see it at Texas World Super Speedway in just a few weeks' time. Who will be able to make the playoffs? We'll be able to establish that at the end of Race 8. But coming up, we've got the Amateur Cup Series at Mirage 2, another road course, as 36 more drivers look to get themselves into their own postseason. We hope you enjoyed today's race coverage at Mayville. For NFR and RVN, my name is Colin Denton, and we hope to see you next time.